You ready? I got New York City. City, city in the palm of my hand. I got city, city, Yeah. Do you know? Y'all feeling that groove? I don't know about you, but it makes this big brother want to move. And if you ain't feeling free, then you might need to really get with me. See, 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 I, I, I got many names, but I only got... I have great pleasure in uh, introducing to you one of my friends, Milton Crea, also known as Big Milt. Uh, big, just a little bit about Big Milt. He's spoken all over the world, guys. He's spoken in 49 states, Europe, Asia, Africa, the Caribbean. He's spoken at four Super Bowls, three NBA Final Fours, and he's been invited to the White House twice. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big welcome to Mr. Milton Crea. Yes, I wore two ninety-nine gym shoes. But what I can tell you, sir, those two ninety-nine gym shoes, they didn't stop anything. My senior year in high school, guys, I had a 31-inch vertical leap wearing two ninety-nine gym shoes. And for those who don't know what that means, if you are six, seven as I am, and you can jump 31 inches straight in the air, and you got hands the size of mine, brother, let me borrow your left hand a minute. Hold your left hand up here a little bit, okay? If you got hands the size of mine. Well, that usually means you can slam dunk a basketball backwards, forwards, sideways, one-handed, two-handed. Oh, and by the way, sir, I got 34 scholarship offers wearing two ninety-nine gym shoes. I live a successful life, but I didn't get it from this. I was never good enough. I didn't get it from football, brother. I was never good enough. Then I got it from this thing right here, which my granddaddy told me years ago, with the brain, you can get everything you want. You know what I'm proudest of with my life? In high school, it was not football or basketball. I'm a National Merit Scholar. You know what that means? I took a little thing called the SAT. That's the test you need to get in the college. I was 20 points off a perfect score. The one thing we know is that when a young man between the ages of not 12 and 19, 12 and 24, gets murdered in this country, he gets murdered in over 90% of the cases by another young man about his same age, his same race, his same neighborhood, typically someone he's known for the previous three or four years, who in many cases, sister, he's called his friend. And then my question becomes, so how come we got guys get killed by somebody they may have played ball with before? Why we got guys getting killed by somebody brother they played PlayStation with before? I can tell you why. 75% of the cases, the guy who does the killing, no matter what race he is, he's under the influence of alcohol. 55% of the cases, the kid who gets killed, he's under the influence of alcohol. But we act like this drinking thing is no big deal. Well, y'all, I'm sorry, this is a big deal. It's absolutely, positively frightening. Daddy's beating mama pretty bad. Little girl tells me she grabbed Daddy by his sleeve, trying to get him to stop. Daddy was real drunk this night. He smacked the girl and knocked her down. Little girl tells me she crawled into a corner. And that particular night, brother, she laid in that corner and cried and watched. As that night, her father beat her mother to death in front of her face. Aunt, a grandma, or a good friend, who you know for a fact, you're not guessing, you know for a fact, has already been beaten by a guy. Y'all look around. No, I mean they get drunk. And they do or say things that hurt people in your family or hurt them on the job or hurt their marriage or they use some kind of illegal drug. How many of you in this room have somebody in your family who's either in jail or prison right now, been in jail or prison before, or been arrested before for something drug or alcohol related? And then I come here to a great school like this, and I see some of you with so much opportunity, but you're so busy trying to look like you're a gangster. Get over it. Get over it. Sir, when I speak in prisons, my first question to the inmates always is, how old are you when you first started using? You know what I usually hear, sir? Between 9 and 19 years old. When I speak to professional athletes who have drinking or drug problems, I always ask them right off the bat, son, how old were you when you first started using? You know what I hear? Between about 12 and 19. And you know what that says to me? If you don't want this in your family, sir, when you grow up, it has very little to do with any decisions you're gonna make 10 years from now in your 20s. It has everything to do with the decisions you make in your life right now, between nine and 19. This ma'am, I spoke in a little town called Marietta, Georgia. You know why they brought me in there? There was a little eighth grade girl that some other girl, girls had written such terrible stuff about her and posted it online, it made this girl wanna kill herself, okay? 
And yet I see people say, oh, that's no big deal. We were just playing. No, you don't play like that. That's not playing. It's wrong. Now, I don't know why y'all laughing at me. There's nothing wrong with me being romantic with my wife. Gentlemen, if you get married one day, you know what? Even if you and your wife been married multiple years, you still ought to be romantic with your wife. Would you agree with that, teachers? Shouldn't I still be romantic? Yeah, I'm romantic with my wife. Flowers, candy, dancing. And some days when she's in the kitchen, if I come home and she's in the kitchen or something, I'll just turn the music on and she'll have to dance. I dance for her. <laughs> All right? I can't show y'all that dance though, okay? <laughs> Oh, shut up, you nasty. Get your mind out the gun. All right? <laughs> Teachers, research says average kid in junior high and high school today, ma'am, puts in 50 hours a week of what's called screen time. You know what that is? Texting, watching move, watching TV, playing video games, and now the fast growing one is the Facebooking. 50 hours a week. Y'all, that's a full time job plus overtime. I ain't doing nothing 50 hours a week unless I get paid. If you took two hours of that screen time every day and applied it to doing whatever your dream is and working towards being successful so you can go to the kind of college you need to go to to make your dream come true, how many think if you put two hours a day into your dream, how many think that may help you 15 years from now have your dream? And how many of you heard at least one thing today that you think could help make your life better 15 years from now. Well, in that case, guys, all I want you to do is be the best that you can be and put in the work and put in the hours so that you can live your dream. Put in the work and the what? Hours. So you can live your dream. Because you deserve it. Anyway, guys, I got to go. Thanks for letting me come and talk to you. God bless. Hell, I'm going on. Don't you know? Yeah, what's going on?